Hare Krishna. So today we'd like to continue the discussion of the 12 principles and values of a successful Krishna conscious Grihastha ashram. And today we're looking at principle number seven, which is open and honest communication. And communication is very essential in our lives, no matter what we, what we are doing. And especially in marriage, it's a very important key. Um, and in terms of Vaishnav theology, we actually understand that communication is involved in Rupa Goswami's six loving exchanges of Vaishnavas. And two of those exchanges are to reveal one's mind in confidence and to hear in confidence. Uh, and Srila Prabhupada, he was describing this once uh, in a talk, and he described how uh, between husband and wife, there are no secrets. He said the husband, he reveals his heart to the wife, and the wife reveals her heart to the husband. And Srila Prabhupada, he described, in this way, love develops, that they both have mutual understanding. Uh, so that's a very important Vaishnav principle. And amongst all the loving exchanges that Rupa Goswami has recommended, um, somehow those two tend to be practiced the least. Uh, as Vaishnavas were very experts at uh, giving prasadam and accepting prasadam, that we've uh, totally mastered. Um, we're also sometimes good at giving gifts and accepting gifts. Uh, but sometimes we're a little short at actually revealing our minds in confidence and hearing in confidence. And uh, it's a very important skill, and it's something that can be learned if we're not familiar. And one of the reasons this is very important, especially in marriage, is very often there's um, unexpressed expectations. Mm -hmm. um, as a common phenomena that couples will think, uh, my spouse should know what I need because they love me. They just expect automatically they should know uh, what you need and when you need it. Um, however, we're uh, we're yogis, we're bhakti yogis, but we're not mystic yogis. We can't read other people's minds. So in marriage, it's very important that you need to learn to uh, say what you need with respect um, and also to understand what you do need to progress in Krishna consciousness, to uh, peacefully be situated in your marriage, and that's going to involve some uh, communication. And also in that process of communication, uh, sometimes we may not even actually know what we need. Uh, but by practicing this process of revealing one's mind and, and trying to understand what we need to advance in Krishna consciousness, that process of communication can very much help us to not just communicate with our partner to see ourselves better. Uh, the process recommended by Rupa Goswami, it's a bit like looking at yourself in a mirror. Um, I put my tilak on in a mirror because I can see myself and I can, I can do a much better job. And in a very similar way, uh, when I'm expressing myself to someone in confidence, my maybe a good friend, my wife, I'm expressing my hopes, my needs, my aspirations. Uh, they're hearing me and they're reflecting back in their own words. What they understand. Okay. What they understand. Yeah, what they understand from what I've said. And so it's, it's as though I am seeing myself reflected off their heart as they repeat back to me what they've understood from what I have said. And by having those kinds of deep, meaningful conversations, again, not, not just we connect, but we actually can understand ourselves in deeper ways. 
Um, and that's a skill that's uh, a very important tool used by counselors in helping individuals overcome their problems. They help them to see themselves better by using that tool of um, Rupa Goswami's recommended loving exchange, although they might, uh, counselors might not even realize it's a spiritual exchange. So a very key and crucial aspect of marriage is this kind of uh, healthy communication and especially in regard to our expectations of marriage and uh, our needs and how we process things. So it's pretty normal that conflicts are going to arise between two different people because we are so different. And we shouldn't think of that negatively. A conflict arising just shows that something needs to be worked on. And if we work on it, we can have personal growth and relationship growth. But in order for it to be effective and not damaging to our relationship, we need to communicate very constructively when there's a conflict. And part of it is just to have the right approach to conflict, to not be afraid of it, to approach it respectfully, and to be able to listen and put ourselves in our partner's shoes, to try to understand their perspective. That requires listening and communicating that we understand and communicating with empathy how we can understand why the person would feel like that how it would make them feel bad etc trying to understand something from the other person's perspective really goes a long way to coming to having a more balanced outcome because you see their perspective and you can understand your perspective you're going to come up with a much broader solution. And also, when we feel understood, we keep that feeling of connection. So it, the conflict doesn't feel so divisive. We don't feel divided by it. We actually feel understood and we start to feel connected. Then in that mood, we can come up with better solutions. And then our relationship will prosper and grow. So healthy communication is really, really important, especially when we're conflicted about some aspects of our relationship. Because we see that when we don't respond well, it can head us in a negative direction. And so there's a marital researcher named Dr. John Gottman, and he's come up with four very negative actions that happen during conflicts, which are detrimental to relationships. And um, the first one is this criticism, where we verbally attack a person uh, for their character or their personality. And that's not a good way to start a conflict. Rather, if we are feeling upset um, about something that a person's done, we need to start more gently, you know, with a gentle startup. Start with the I statement. I'm feeling hurt because of this. I'm feeling disappointed. Start gently to bring it up, not with criticism. And uh, we also want to avoid being defensive when our partner brings up something. Because if we have this continuous defensive mood where we just become the victim and we try to just ward off some perceived attack that our partner's um, directing towards us or we feel blame and we get defensive, it's very hard to um, navigate the conflict. Instead, we need to stop for a moment and take responsibility. Accept our partner's perspective, maybe offer an apology for something that we've done, um, even just for a little part 
of the problem, we can accept responsibility. And that goes a long way to having further mm, progressive, healthy conversation. Because otherwise, we can find that contempt can enter into relationships. And contempt is one of those negative, um, what's the word? Negative interactions that is especially detri detrimental. When we come to the point in our relationship where we're insulting, where the person says some comment, we're rolling our eyes, we are name calling, we're being sarcastic that's a type of contemptuous behavior. And when that gets firmly lodged in relationships, very unhealthy, and divorce is not far down the path. So in order to avoid getting there, we need to have the healthy communication where we build the culture of appreciation. Appreciation is so important in relationships that we remind ourselves of our partner's positive qualities, even when we're having small conflicts. Maybe we're having a conflict over this, but my partner has so many good qualities that I can appreciate them in so many ways and find gratitude for the positive actions that they are taking. Even during conflict, if they do anything at all positive, we want to be show gratitude and appreciation. So that helps communication to be much healthier. And one of the negative communication habits that we want to avoid also is this stonewalling. When there's some conflict, we just withdraw to avoid the conflict. And it conveys like disapproval, it causes distancing, it causes separation, and it doesn't deal with the problem. So when we feel perhaps emotionally overwhelmed, where we want to just not deal with it, we need to become expert in self-soothing. You know, take a break, spend some time doing something that's soothing and distracting, and then communicate that I will be back in order to discuss it with in a healthy way. So it's really important to overcome these negative ways of interaction, interacting, which I will just summarize as criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling. So we want to instead have healthier ways of interacting. And that goes a long way to having a better um, feeling of our relationship being healthy and happy. So by cultivating and practicing uh, open and honest communication, that even your conflicts can be managed in a way that are constructive and non-confrontational. And as Uttama was saying, by understanding each other, um, many times some situations, some uh, differences you have in style or ways of thinking, there may, there may not be a black and white solution. But the fact that you understand each other's perspective and respect it, you can agree to disagree and you can actually love each other. <laughs> and statistically, in healthy marriages, couples can have up to 69% of those kinds of challenges. There is no black and white solution, but they respect each other and they love each other. And they do that through healthy communication. And they learn to negotiate mm -hmm. how to deal with their differences, even though there's perhaps not a solution, they negotiate. So this open and honest communication, it's something that uh, can be learned by practice, uh, as Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita, how 
um, the modes of material nature, they compete for supremacy and the qualities, the negative qualities Uttama was describing are definitely communication in the modes of passion and ignorance. And Srila Prabhupada, he describes how by practice, one should cultivate the activities of the mode of goodness. And if we become a little perceptive and analyze our communications, well, how healthy are the exchanges between myself and my spouse? Do we have these negative patterns? And if we do, what can we do to correct them? How can we develop healthy communication? And, uh, and it's something very much we should all aspire for is to come to that mode of goodness, inner communication, um, by practicing this uh, loving exchange as recommended by Rupa Goswami. And it's not something that's difficult, but again, it takes practice because we're very much accustomed to uh, these kind of negative patterns by material conditioning. So, once Srila Prabhupada commented that our philosophy will have little or no meaning without proper character. So we actually need to develop better ways of communication, better ways of interacting with our spouses, um, and develop these good character traits where our Vaishnavism shines in every aspect of all of our relationships. So healthy communication is very key. So again, we're still in the tail end of the COVID um, lockdown situation. Some places they're easing up and some places they're tightening up. And again, sometimes we find ourselves um, having a lot of association with the people that we love the most and sometimes the ones we have the most conflict with, <laughs> ironically. Um, so the one advantage of this current situation, it actually gives us an opportunity to practice those qualities of Vaishnavism, the patience and tolerance and humility. And this healthy communication can very much enable us to um, as Prabhupada said, he wanted to create peace and tranquility in the world through propagation of healthy values. And again, this communication is a very important value in Vaishnavism. And the situation we are in actually affords us a lot of opportunity to learn to communicate with our spouses. So thank you very much. If there's any questions at this point, we'll, we'll take them. Hare Krishna, sorry, uh, we have a question. Uh, if I feel that our uh, communication is not really positive and I'd like to make steps towards it, so practically, how, what, what should I start with? Um, well, you've made a start by realizing that you have issues with your communication. That's good. And I would suggest, um, especially if you can find some mentor who can teach you the process, uh, if you know a couple that's maybe happily married, ask them what's working for them and how they're able to communicate. Uh, and especially to devotees who are listening in Russia, um, in Moscow, we've uh, taught some couples how to transmit this skill to others and you can uh, uh, seek them out and uh, try to get some coaching and training from them and online also there's all kinds of resources also for sometimes it's referred to as empathic communication or compassionate communication and uh, getting that knowledge can help us get a clear understanding of how that process works it's actually a natural process once you understand it, but because we're unnaturally conditioned, the process may seem unnatural when we learn it, but as you learn the process, uh, it becomes easier. 
I would also say that if you're having negative communication, a really good place to start is using those I statements and talk about yourself instead of you're doing this, you're doing that. You know, the kind of, it com- because it comes across as blame. So instead, if you can just explain how you're feeling, you know, um, that hurt my feelings. Um, I don't feel like you're understanding me right now. Could you just listen for a minute? Um, I'm feeling criticized. Could you perhaps rephrase that? Just try to do little things to jumpstart healthier communication. And we also want to take responsibility for our own negative communication. When we are communicating badly, apologize. Say, oh, I'm sorry, my reaction was too extreme, or oh gosh, I blew that. Can I just rephrase that? Um, Or, oh yeah, I see my part in the problem. I could correct this, and how could we move forward? So taking responsibility, um, stating our feelings, not blaming, and pointing out what we appreciate in the other person. That really goes a long way to improving communication. You know, um, I know this isn't all your fault. I appreciate the endeavors you have been making. I'm thankful for this. You know, I understand that you meant this. Be appreciative. I think those are good places to start. Thank you. So uh, the like continuation to this question, if um, the person starts, uh, one person in a couple starts it, I feel from your answer it will be enough to jump start this process, rectifying the situation. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, even one person, one of the couple endeavoring to make things better will start. Because you don't keep that same pattern, the dominoes to the negative. You've broken up your pattern and you've headed it towards something positive. Um, Sometimes couples both will sit in dissatisfaction waiting for the other person to change and waiting for them to make the first move to improve. Uh, but the result is no one, no, no one improves. <laughs> so congratulations if you're taking the steps. <laughs> yeah, and I wanted to make a, a comment that um, what a beautiful quote you gave of Prabhupada that our philosophy doesn't make much sense if we do not have the character for it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That is very inspiring. So, Hare Krishna. Uh, and uh, today is the beautiful uh, day of Balaram Purnima. And I um, would like to, uh, I don't know, give our best wishes to you on this day. Thank you very Thank you. much. And may he, Lord Balaram provide you the strength to improve your relationships in a wonderful way so that you can all come closer together. <laughs>